you have suffered financial loss while investing, and you think your bank, broker, fund management company, unit trust management company, PRS provider or distributor, or their agent or representative is responsible, you need help sorting out the problem or want to seek redress, where do you go? Sidrek is here to help you start the conversation and reach some resolution. First, lodge a formal complaint with a company that sold or offered you the unit trusts, shares, derivatives or other capital market product or service. But you're not happy with their response. You have 180 days from their final written reply to come to Sidrek. Or if there's no written response and it's been 90 days since you wrote to them, you don't need to wait longer. You may come to Sidrek even though you haven't received a final response yet. Sidrek first checks the eligibility of your claim. For example, is it within Sidrek's claim limit? Is it against a member of Sidrek? And so forth. If your case is eligible, we begin the dispute resolution process. All information in this process is confidential. We get both you and the member you're complaining against to sit with us and have a conversation. Documents and information will be required from both parties. No lawyers are allowed in the mediation process as we keep the discussions informal and private. Our mediators are impartial and will hear both sides out and help parties communicate constructively towards resolving the dispute. Two outcomes are possible at this stage. Either both you and the member agree to a settlement or you don't. If the both of you agree to a settlement, an agreement is signed and the mediation process ends successfully. But if both you and the member fail to reach a satisfactory resolution, mediation has thus failed. But don't worry, Sidrek then proceeds to the next stage, adjudication. During adjudication, parties are given the chance to provide any further information to help their case and ask each other further questions. Our adjudicator will then study and consider all facts and information provided, including the conduct of the parties, laws and best industry practices, as well as what's fair and reasonable. Sidrek's adjudicator will then make a final decision on the dispute and the monetary claim. If the decision is in your favour, it could be a full award or a partial award for your claim. But if the decision isn't in your favour, then no award will be made. You, the investor, will still have a choice. If you reject the decision, Sidrek will simply close the case and you may seek other legal avenues for redress. If you choose to accept the decision, however, the member has to comply with it. Once the parties have confirmed compliance to the decision, Sidrek will close the case. So let Sidrek help start the conversation towards resolution. For more information, visit sidrek.com.my or call 03-2282-2280. All right, so hi everyone. Welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by LiveChamp. My name is Carmen and I will be your moderator for today. So the session, the title of our session today is Bring It Cost Averaging. Is this a suitable strategy for you? So before we proceed any further, just allow me to do a little bit of disclaimer. So please be reminded that everything that you share in this session today is mainly for educational purpose. By no means that we are providing you any advice to buy or sell any forms of security. And you are 100% liable if you make any investment decision. Okay, and today we are very honored to invite the co-founder of Dividend Vault, Mr. Ian Tai to share insights more to share insights more on what the strategy is about and how you can leverage on the strategy to build your own portfolio effectively. And with that being said, just allow me to give it a little bit of background to everyone here. So Mr. Ian is a content producer in, from KC Lau. He has written over 290 plus articles and he do regularly hosts webinars and he's also one of the presenters as well. And as mentioned, he's also the co-founder of Dividend Vault that focuses on transforming newbies into investors who can build dividend portfolio independently via education. And yes, as you can see, he is a dividend inv investor and he, I would say he has to he yield around 2 to 10% of dividend yield per annum. All right, with that being said, uh, please welcome Mr. Ian to the floor. All right. Hi, hi, Ian. Hello. Hello, right. Carmen. Nice to hey. meet you. 
So nice to meet you. I think without further ado, I will just pass the floor to you. Lah. Let me just stop sharing the screen. Sure. Okay, yep, you can share the screen now. Yep, it's my turn to share the screen. Okay. Okay, so this is where we left off, right? And uh, guys, once again, so happy to be here. And uh, before I begin, just a quick thanks to Carmen for a very nice introduction. And for our live champ and for Bursa Malaysia, it's always good. And I'll discuss a little bit about, but to uh, have any questions along the way, don't wait until the end of this presentation. Just um, post your questions in the Q&A box and I'll be more than happy to address them at the end of this sharing session. All right. So we let's get into the content for today. So today we're going to talk about ring gate cost averaging. So therefore, we are going to talk about five key things today. All right. So this is actually the webinar outline for today. Number one, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you the definition of ring gate cost averaging. So the original term of this is actually called dollar cost averaging. But since we are living in Malaysia and we are using ringgit Malaysia, so therefore ringgit cost averaging. Number two, I will actually explain what are the objectives of using RCA or ringgit cost averaging. Number three, there are pros to using RCA to build a portfolio. There are cons and disadvantages as well to using RCA to build your portfolio. So I will be actually explaining that in the third part of this webinar session. The fourth one is to actually share with you a case study on how it can work for you and how it does not work for you, all right? So it's not just about blindly use RCA to actually build your portfolio. There is, there is some criteria that you need to strictly follow in order to make this work for you. And last but not least, I will share some notes on how all of us can actually use RCA effectively to build our own portfolios. So with that, let's go on to the first one which is, what is Ringgit Cost Averaging, RCA? So Ringgit Cost Averaging, right? The definition is actually sum, summarized over here in this one in this one sentence over here, these two liners over here. So let me just read it out to you. Ringgit Cost Averaging is about investing a fixed Ringgit amount in a stock on a regular basis, regardless of its stock price. Okay, so the key words here are highlighted in red. So the first one is fixed ringgit amount. The second one is stock. The third one is regular. And the last one is regardless. So let me just go through them one by one. Fixed ringgit amount, it can be any amount, but it's actually a fixed amount. Like for example, every time you buy into a stock is 500 ringgit or 1000 ringgit, 2000 ringgit or 10,000 ringgit per transaction. So every transaction, the dollar amount is actually, or should I say the ringgit amount is actually quite, kind of fixed, okay? So you have already preset a de preset or predetermined an amount to invest, okay? So that's the first one. The second one is the stock. So under RCA, you kind of like predetermine what, what exactly is the stock that you want to actually buy into. Okay, so let's say you are interested to buy, let's say, A per heart, of a, for, in, for instance. So therefore, you will be buying into the stock on a regular basis, which is the third one. But you're buying the same stock using the same ringgit amount to buy the stock and accumulate for, and you are accumulating it for the long term. Okay, so it's the same stock, same of fixed ringgit amount. Then we look at the third one, which is regular. So regular simply means to say you have a, you kind of like predetermine how frequent you want to buy the stock. It can be on a monthly basis, which means every month you set aside, let's say 500 ringgit to buy a certain stock that you like and you keep doing that month after month, year after year. Okay, so that is actually what you have, what you plan to do. And the fourth one here is actually regardless. Regardless simply means you don't really care too much about the stock price. You kind of like just buy, all right? So for example, <clears throat> since you're already fixing the amount, let's say 
let's put it 1,000 ringgit lah. Okay, every month, 1,000 ringgit, you buy a certain stock. So in the month where the stock price is actually higher, then of course you will have lesser shares. But in months where, let's say that at a, at a certain month, the stock price is actually much lower, then of course you're going to buy yourself a lot more shares. So when the stock price is higher, you buy, but then you, you have lesser shares. But when the stock price is lower, then of course you buy more shares. Okay? So basically, if you understand these four things, then you kind of like understand how or what is ringgit cost averaging. Fixed ringgit amount, same stock. Um, the frequency, it has to be regular. can be monthly, quarterly, bi-monthly, or half-yearly or annually. Up to you. All right, but make sure it's regular. And then the fourth one is regardless of stock price. Okay, so in order to understand this better, so let's do a very quick case study and uh, let's go through it together, shall we? So we have a stock, which is Aberhart, which is a fictitious company. It's an actual company listed on, on Bursa Malaysia, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just conceal the identity of the stock for this case study. So let's just call this company Aberhart. And you like this company and you want to accumulate it for the long term. You have set aside 10,000 ringgit, which is the fixed amount, fixed amount of investment capital that you want to invest to buy Aberhart shares. And the frequency of your investment will be annually. That means it every year, at 31st December, starting from 2010, you buy Aberhart shares. Okay, so which means 2010, 31st December of 2010, whatever price that, that is shown on your, that is shown at the stock brokerage account for Aberhart, you set aside $10,000 and then you buy the shares. Next year, at 31st December 2011, you set aside 10,000. Also, Aberhart, whatever the stock price, you buy. You repeat the same thing in 2012, 13, 14, 15, and all the way up to right now, which is 2023. What about 2024? Since we haven't, since we are still starting the year, so your next investment will be 31st December 2024. Okay. At what price you buy? Whatever price that is shown as of 31st December. It could be high, it could be low. So if it's high, then you buy lesser shares of Aberhart. If it's low, then you buy more shares of Aberhart. Okay. So, and this is actually what happened. So if you look at the graphics, this is from this is a stock price chart for Google Finance, okay, and uh, it's actually a real, actual stock listed on Bursa Malaysia. So what happened is that, thirty first December ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand. All in all, starting from two thousand and ten, all the way up to two o two three, you would have invested. 14,000 ringgit in the span of these 13 years. Lah. Of course, you count 2010 as one year. Okay. So there are 14 transactions that you have made, each around 10,000. So you have made 14. So you have made an investment. If you total up, the amount of investment that you have made is 140k, which is 140,000 into A Bahad shares. Now let's look at the returns. So if you continue to do that for the past 13, 14 years, making 14 transactions, buying A Bahad shares, at the time when I prepared this slide, which is not too long ago, just a few weeks ago, what happened is this. As of now, you would have accumulated 37,700 shares of Aberhart 
you are the owner of 37,700 shares of this company called Eberhard. And the value of this Eberhard shares that you hold today would be 165,000 more or less. The amount of dividends that you receive throughout this period of time will be around 34,000 ringgit. Okay. So remember, over the past 13, 14 years, the amount of investment that you make is 140,000 ringgit. But right now, the share, all right, the shares that you own, the value right now is actually 165,000. So which means there's a slight capital appreciation that you are now enjoying, approximately about 25,000 ringgit. Plus, over the past 13, 14 years, you would have received another 34,000 ringgit in dividends. And on top of that, the returns are still ongoing simply because you are the owner of these shares, which is 37,700 shares of Eberhard. From there, as an investor, you would, you would be expecting to earn or receive 6,786 ringgit worth of dividend income per annum. And of course, if you want to average it, average it out on a monthly basis, that will be a passive income or dividend income of 566 ringgit per month. Okay. So that is actually how RCA works. Okay. Here, so far, so good. I mean to say that is actually part number one. So, uh, are there any questions from the audience? Are there anything that you would like to clarify before I move on? If not, uh, if you feel that you need to, if you need me to clarify anything, just put it in a Q&A box or put it in a chat box. Later, I will actually come back to that, right? So right now, we have actually done what is RCA, which is Ringgit Cost Averaging. And right now, we are going to go into the second part of this webinar session. Where we, where we are going to talk about the objectives of using RCA. Okay, so why RCA is actually an investment strategy or a strategy, or a strategy used by investors? Simply because uh, RCA is meant to actually address a few problems that investors have. And the first one is actually shown on the screen, which is, um, which is this, all right? The first one is actually the first one, the first problem that people have when it comes to building a portfolio or when it comes to investing is this. Now, this is actually the same. This is actually a Berhard share price, also from Google Finance. So if you look over here, there's a growth in terms of a stock price. So the first problem that people have is this. When you see a stock price chart like this and everything seems to go up, people may think in their mind that this stock has become expensive. All right. So if the stock price actually increase up, upwards like this, as shown on the screen, people, people may perceive that this is expensive and therefore they may not want to buy into the stock. And when they don't buy the, into the stock, then of course they don't actually accumulate that. 37,700 shares that I have mentioned in the previous slide. All right. So because of this, people don't invest. The second problem that people have when it comes to investing is this. Can you see this? All right. So this stock right has also experienced a spike when it comes to, they have actually experienced a sharp spike. So the stock price actually grew up very fast like this. So when people see that, oh, so a certain stock actually, the share price actually increased or melonja so high at a, such a short period of time, right? What happened is that people start to have, what happened is that people start to have greed. And when greed happens, right, that's FOMO. Means to say they have a fear of missing out. Hey, something is actually moving up. So what happened is that they start to buy, they start to buy over here. Where as a matter of fact, they are not supposed to buy when there's a sharp spike. But because of greed, 
people tend to actually go in and buy simply because they want to capitalize on this fast trend and try to make a quick buck out of this stock. So that is actually human problem number two. So remember, human problem number one, when they see the stock price grow, they think it's expensive, they don't buy. But when they see a stock price already go up, but now going up faster, they they are afraid of missing out the they are afraid of missing out the bandwagon. They are afraid of missing out this kind of sharp spike. So therefore they start to come in and buy. And now let me talk about the third problem that people have when it comes to building portfolios, which is highlighted over here. Can you see there's a sharp drop over here? So stock price was here and then it kind of like fall from grace. So when it fall from grace, the thing is that there's a lot of panic selling over here. And the question that people have is this, will this stock actually drop further in stock price? Because whatever is falling right, tend, may tend to fall a bit lower. So in this case, people either sell or people just wait and see and they don't buy. Okay. So that are, so these are the three main problems that people have when it comes to building a portfolio. So how does RCA solve this kind of how does RCA come into the picture and solve these problems? Now, first let me just let me just repeat and just reiterate the typical problems that people face when it comes to building portfolios. The first one is this short-term trading mindset whereby people are very short-term minded. They have a trading mindset. So when it comes to trading mindset, they tend to chase. They tend to chase stock price. They tend to chase trends. They tend to follow the wind. All right. So because of that, when prices go up, either they think that it's too expensive, they don't buy, or if the stock price go up quickly, they tend to buy because they fear that they will miss out, all right? And then the opposite may happen. If the stock market crash and the stock prices tank, there will be panic selling and they won't buy. So these are the typical problems that people face when it comes to building a sustainable portfolio. But with RCA, simply because RCA is about making investments regardless of stock price. So when you make investments regardless of spot price, what happens is that, number one, it forces you to be long-term. You need to think long-term and not short-term. So it forces you to actually look at the picture, look at the whole investment portfolio as a vehicle to build wealth in the long-term. Number two, it is actually about investing, buying, not so much to sell, but buying to keep. Okay, so which means to say RCA is a strategy to accumulate for the long term. And because of that, when prices are going up, do you still buy? With RCA strategy, you still buy, okay? But you just buy a bit lesser simply because the prices are higher. And if prices go up quickly, then of course you will buy even lesser simply because higher, higher, higher price. So you'll buy lesser, lesser shares. But during market crisis, you tend to buy more shares. Why? Simply because the stock price is coming down. And especially at the bottom, you still buy, but you buy at the, you buy and you will accumulate more shares. So that's, so therefore you will kind of like average out your investment costs. That's why RCA, the A stands for averaging. You're averaging the high price and the low price so that your average investment cost is actually at the at the lower base as compared to many other investors who tend to buy high and sell low. Okay, so that is actually the whole objectives of using RCA to build your portfolio. Next, we are going to look at what are the pros and cons for using RCA. Okay. Now, there are quite a number of advantages of using RCA as an investor to build your portfolio. 
The first one is that it is automated. It is simple. It is easy to implement. You just fix an amount, select your stock, fix an amount, choose a frequency that you are comfortable with, monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, half-yearly, or yearly, and then you just invest. It's quite simple. It's a strategy. It can be automated. All right, just take the money, buy. Okay, take the, take the money, set aside, wait for the time, buy, finish. It's automated. Number two, because it forces you to accumulate, therefore, people who actually practice RCA for five years, 10 years, or even 20 years can actually build up a very sizable portfolio over the long term. What is sizable? Sizable can mean six figures, seven figures, or eight figures. Okay. So it depend it also depends on the amount you allocate. Lah. All right. The amount you allocate. Just think of it this way, yeah. Um, another example of RCA, right, is actually our EPF. Why? Simply because every single month, let's say if you're an employee, you're receiving a salary. That is, it is mandatory to actually contribute to your EPF. So in a way, that is actually a form of RCA. So if you have been working for 20, 30, 40, 40 years, and you have been RCA, and you have been using RCA to build up your EPF, that's how your EPF grows to a size of six figures, seven figures, and so on and so forth. Okay. So if you look at EPF, which is kind of like a false RCA, right? What if you use the same thing and do it on the stock market? You can actually build yourself a sizable portfolio. But if you are one of those people who are trying to do market timing, maybe you trade small, small amount of money here. Maybe you try to do this and do that. You try to do all sorts of uh, things to actually time the market and wait for the right time then your portfolio size at the end of the day will be smaller because most of the time you will be just sitting on the fences, wait and see. Okay, so, so RCA can really help investors to build sizable portfolios. Number three, um, of course, you tend to buy more of this, you tend to buy more stocks at lower prices. So therefore, if you are making any form of capital gains or capital growth, uh, it will be much better than people who buy who buy the stock, the same stock at a higher price. It's like Aberhart. Let's go back to Aberhart. People who actually do um, ringgit cost averaging can actually lower down their investment costs. All right. So that they are not the ones that actually buy at a at a much higher higher price. Okay, so comparatively, people who use RCA can actually achieve better capital gains as compared to some people who buy the same stock at the higher price. But the reverse is also true, whereby if you use RCA to buy a certain stock, and let's say the stock actually you know the stock price goes down, what happens is that. Um, the capital losses that you incur may be reduced. So I'm not saying that RCA is a complete strategy whereby sure gain, it's, it doesn't work that way. But if you happen to make more, but if the stock price happened to go up, then you kind of like make more than the next investor. But if the stock price actually go down, then you kind of like uh, reduce your losses or you kind of have a loss which is lesser as compared to another investor. So that's the beauty of RCA. And last but not least, for those of you who are like us, like everyone here who is still earning active income, it is actually a suitable strategy for people who are receiving income on a monthly basis. So therefore you can actually do uh, investments on a much more frequent basis. Okay. So that is actually the beauty for using RCA. Now, there are cons to using RCA. And the first one is actually quite apparent. And the thing is this, 
when it comes to RCA, you need to be a little bit like machine lah, because it's like, imagine every quarter you set aside a certain amount of money to buy a stock. Let's say Aberhart. Let's say you do it March, June, September, December. And you have to be a bit mechanical and disciplined lah, to actually really buy the stock at that time. March, June, September, December. And you kind of like repeat it on a yearly basis. You are like machine lah. But the thing about us is that we are all human beings. We are not machines. And when it comes to investing, human beings like us, we are we tend to be a little bit more emotional. We tend to not like machine lah, quite logical, quite rational. Humans can be a little bit irrational. So we may actually set aside a plan to do this kind of thing like RCA, March, June, September, December. But somehow rather, maybe after following that plan, uh, first time, second time, maybe the third time you don't want to follow already. And when that happens, then RCA does not work. Okay, so that's the first one. Humans are not even not exactly rational beings. And uh, we may do our plan, but then we don't follow and stick true to the plan. So that is actually the cons. The second one is that uh, most people, uh, they like to trade. They like to buy. And then, and then if they see there's a profit, then they may want to sell. Or if they see the stock price actually drop, they want to sell already. So if they have a trading mindset whereby they want to buy a stock and not to keep, but they just want to make short-term profits. And when you have that kind of mindset, then it's a bit hard to do RCA. As a matter of fact, if you are a trader, RCA does not work. Okay? RCA is actually best, is better suited for people who are investors. Simply because in order for RCA to work, it requires a long-term mindset, a long-term investment mindset for it to work. You need to have a time frame and the time frame is measured in years. Not minutes, not days, not weeks or months. Years before you can actually appreciate and see it work. And there is actually one more disadvantage to using RCA and that is and that is actually something that uh, that bugs me a little bit. And the disadvantage is this. RCA doesn't take into account stock valuation. Simply because in the RCA strategy, there's no mentioning of PE ratio, dividend yields, and, uh, and you don't actually take into account that sort of stuff as compared to the past historical PE ratio and dividend yields. So with this RCA strategy, if you look back the definition, okay, let me just go back to the first slide over here. It says investing a fixed ringgit amount in a stock on a regular basis, regardless of its stock price, which means if the stock price is undervalued, you buy, fairly valued, you buy, overvalued, you also buy because it's regardless of its stock price. So that bugged me a little bit simply because I am one of those people who don't like to buy stocks if they are overvalued. Simply because it doesn't make any sense to buy a stock when it is overvalued. Supposedly, if let's say a stock, let's say Aberhart, the PE ratio, the let's say, let's just give it a fictitious amount. Lah. Let's say the PE ratio on average is about 15. And if a Berhad share price goes up to an extent whereby the PE ratio is now 25 or 30, why do I buy the stock, right? So in that sense, uh, that is actually the cons. Lah. If you follow this rule, this RCA thing too strictly, then uh, you will have to buy the stock at prices which is overvalued. And it will be detrimental to your portfolio. Okay, so that is actually one of the one of the things that I consider as one of the things that I think is a setback to using RCA when it comes to building stock portfolios. Now let me go back to the syllabus. Okay, so we have covered a lot of ground whereby 
So far, I have actually explained what RCA is. I've shown you one case where, uh, one case of how it works. And then I we have actually deep dive into what are the pros and cons to using RCA when it comes to building a portfolio. Next, we are going to talk about examples of how it can work. So I'm going to give you one example of how it can work and another example of how it will not work. Okay, with that, let's get into it. So the first one is, so the first one, which is Abelhard, this is an example that is working. Why? Simply because, oh, there's a typo over here. Let me just quickly change this. Let me just quickly change this graph over here. Just give me a moment. So you can see over here, right? That over the past 13, 14 years, you have invested 140,000 ringgit into Abraham stock. Right? From which, if you hold on to this stock until today, you will now have 37,700 shares of Able Heart, whereby the market value is 165,000. The amount of dividends collected is 34,000. And even so, right now, you're expecting to collect an annual dividend income of 6,354 ringgit. Mm. So this is actually an example of how RCA can work. Now I'm going to explain to you why it can work. How come this example of Abelhard can work? So why does it work for Abelhard? Now a key answer to this why RCA can work for Abelhard is simply because of the business fundamentals of Abelhard. Let me show you. So this is Abelhard, and these are the actual earning figures that are plucked from its annual reports. We have the blue bar over here, and we have the red bar over here. So the blue represents a period where you haven't buy into Abelhard. You haven't started to RCA on Abelhard shares. So this is a period where the blue one is actually where you start to do your due diligence. You start to do your fundamental analysis. You start to download their annual reports and start to study the company just to make sure that the company is financially solid. So what happened is that during 2010, when your balloon start, you haven't started investing, but you did your homework. This is what you have gathered for Abelhard. Okay. So imagine you are an investor back in 2010. This is actually what you this is actually what you will have gathered as an investor. So back then in 2010, if you look back at its past uh financial performance, its earnings. You'll find that this company, right, has increased its earnings from 717 uh, million. And it has actually increased its earnings on a consistent basis all the way up to $3 billion. Okay. 717 million all the way up to 3 billion. So it is a company that has consistently grown its profits for a long term. So this is the blue one. So after you look at the blue one, therefore you start to RCA. You start to invest in the stock. And every year, as you, as you continue to invest in the stock, you also check its financial performance. And every year you check, you look at Abelhard over here. Oh, uh, this is when you started to buy the stock. It earns $3 billion. The following year, 3.5 billion. The following year, 3.8, 4.1, 4.5, 5.1 billion, 5.2 billion, 5.5 billion, 5.6 billion. So as you continue to invest, you continue to track the performance of Abelhard 
and you find that the company's profitability has continued to grow as you invest. All right. Now, the only exception is actually 2020, but this is actually due to COVID-19. But even due to COVID-19, it's still making $4.9 billion. So you're like, okay, lah. even COVID-19, you still make $4.9 billion. Fine. You take it as you take it as a one-off event. And even with the one-off event, it doesn't go from profitability to losses. It's just a slight reduction in terms of profitability. Then after, after COVID-19, the next year, it bounced back to 5.66 billion or 5.7 billion. And right now, as of 2022, um, it makes $6.1 billion or $6.1 billion ringgit. Okay. So which means to say RCA, you continue the RCA into Aberhart as long as Aberhart's profitability, as long as Aberhart continues to be income generative, consistently grow its profits, then you continue to RCA. Now, if you actually do the comparison between its past, it not its past, if you continue to do its uh continue to track its uh, performance, its financial performance here, and you compare it with its uh, stock price performance, you can see that Aberhart has, has been delivering consistent growth in profits. And this kind of uh, consistent growth in profits has been reflected on its stock price performance over here. All right, stock price, stock profits go up, Stock price also has been quite positive for Aberhart. So in this case, you can do RCA, no problem. Now I'm going to show you an example of how RCA would not work. All right, so pay attention as this is actually a very good case study. Now, let's say we have B Berhad. So over here, I do the opposite, lah, whereby let's say you start to RCA into B Berhad. And let's say B Berhad, you are looking at, you backtrack its uh, financial performance from 2001 all the way to 2010. You find that B Berhad, before you invest, it seems to be okay, doing okay in terms of its financial performance. Then you start to RCA. So you start to buy here and then you start buy here simply because there's a growth in profitability. But after this period, over time, they kind of like uh, just maintain the profitability over the long term. And then during MCO or during COVID-19, or you can say since COVID-19, this company has been incurring losses. So which means to say the highest amount of profit was made in 2012, where it made 3.98 billion ringgit. But after that, it failed to actually continue on the growth legacy. As a matter of fact, if you look at the graph, if you look at the profitability uh, bar chart over here, uh, profitability has been declining and it has turned from profits into losses. So what happened to its stock price? If you look, if you translate it to the stock price, this is actually what happens. So initially, it has a good, initially, it kind of like increase, increase a lot simply because the profit growth here is a lot. Then subsequently, it kind of like drop simply because it failed to replicate that kind of a profitability growth that it used to have in 20, 2010 to 2012. So you can see that from 2012 onwards, 2013 all the way to 2018, it's kind of like stagnant. And then during COVID-19, it kind of like uh, go down and never seem to recover. So which means to say, RCA does not work if you keep on buying into stocks that have poorer fundamentals. It does not work on stocks or anything that has poor fundamentals the more you rca on stuff or investments that have poor 
fundamentals, the more you will lose. Lah. Let's put it that way. So let's put this into numbers. What happened is this. If you have been investing the same $140,000 or 140000 ringgit into B Berhad and, and you do that with RCA, today you will have 20,800 shares of B Berhad but the value of these 20,800 shares would be 102,000. So that's a capital loss over here. Sure enough, you will receive some dividends from this B Berhad, which is about 15 to 16,000. But 15 to 16,000, you top it up with 102,000 over here, it's still lesser than the amount of capital you invested in the first place. So which means to say, for the past 13 years, if you RCA with B Berhad, you have wasted your time. You will be much better off taking this 140,000 and put it in the bank in the first place to make your 3%, 2%, 3% or 4% FD. That will be even better than RCA, than using RCA to accumulate B Berhad shares. And of course, at this stage, uh, with your 20,800 shares, you can expect maybe about $3,000 worth of dividends that will work out to be a passive income of 260 ringgit a month. But uh, that's not very consequent. That's not very consequential at this stage of investing already. Okay. So now the final part of this webinar session, then uh, please ask all the questions that you may want to ask when it comes to building a portfolio. Here, I'm going to just leave you guys with some notes as to how you can effectively use RCA when it comes to building your portfolios. Let's get into it. So, the effective methods to using RCA. Number one, um, you can actually start off with having a watch list of fundamentally solid stocks. Find 20 or 25 of this kind of a hard stocks. If you have A, Berhad kind of stocks, find 20 or 25 of them and keep it in your watch list. That's the first one. Or at least that is actually what I will do or what I'm doing right now. Have 20 to 25 of these A, Berhad stocks. How does A, Berhad look like? A, Berhad looks something like this. Find a stock that looks like A, Berhad when it comes to its long-term profitability Find it, keep it in your watch list. Number two, use stock valuation. Okay, which means to say, calculate their PE ratio and their dividend yields. That's step number two. Step number three, of course, you can set aside fixed amounts of money to invest in this Aberhart, all this bunch of Aberhart companies when they are undervalued or value value. Make sure you don't buy them when they are overvalued. So let's say you have 20 to 25 of these Aberhart stocks. Not all of them are, not all of them at the same time are undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued. At a single point of time, let's say you let's say you decide to invest in March, June, September, December. Maybe in March certain companies within that pool of stocks that you have, all the A Berhards that you have, some of them are undervalued, some of them are fairly valued, some of them are overvalued. Maybe you can actually choose the, the best within that pool and just start off with that first. June comes, do the same. September comes, do the same. December comes, do the same. At any time when the stock is actually overvalued, you don't, you just keep and you don't actually invest more. You find within your pool which are the stocks that are undervalued or fairly valued. Okay? Don't buy when they are overvalued. Now, during market crashes, this is actually a time to be more disciplined, to be more mentally and financially prepared, to not panic sell, but to actually accumulate more of these A Berhad shares when their prices are low when their prices are hitting rock bottom, that is actually the time where you can actually come in, step in and accumulate these stocks. 
So be disciplined, lah, especially if you are looking to use RCA to build your portfolio. Number five, when the stock becomes overvalued, especially when these stocks are in your portfolio, let's say there are certain Aberhart shares in your watch list that are now overvalued. There's no need to actually just throw them out of the watch list. Just keep them because uh, from my experience, what I know is that some of these overvalued stocks can actually become fairly valued and undervalued over time. So just keep them. Just keep them in your watch list until they become either fairly valued or overvalued. Then you start to accumulate them. And last but not least, investing in shares is not so much about buying to trade. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and all this kind of stuff. There's no need to actually do that. When it comes to building portfolios, be long-term minded. Just buy and accumulate. Okay? Just think of it this way. I'm about to end this session. What you need to do is this. So A Berhad shares, let's say after 10, 15 years of investing, you accumulated 37,000 of these shares. Imagine you have A Berhad, you have five or maybe 10 of these A Berhad shares. Each of these shares, you accumulate 37,000, 40,000, 50,000 shares of this kind of companies. Then, of course, your portfolio value will be somewhere between six to seven figures. Obviously, the expected dividend yields will be in the five figures range. All right, which will actually provide you with a semi retired kind of a lifestyle. Lah simply because every year you are receiving five figures worth of dividend income. Okay, so this is actually, I'm not saying that this is actually for everyone, but for me, it's desirable. Lah. Simply because uh, I will not, simply because uh, I'm on my way to building that. And, uh, and I know that this is actually quite possible for a lot of people, especially for those of you who are regular income earners, not into those of you who are not into buying and selling, trading all the time. If you want something that is more sustainable, actually you can replicate this. You can just RCA on all the A Bahad shares that I mentioned. And from there, you can actually build yourself a six, seven figure portfolio to earn yourself maybe a four or five figure kind of a dividend income. So that one is actually quite possible. But the thing is that it takes some time, maybe 10 years or 15 years to actually see that fruit. But even before the 10 to 15 years, even let's say three to five years time, you'll see some, you will get to see some results already. Lah. All right. So all you need to do is when it comes to doing RCA is to exercise a little bit of patience, exercise a little bit of long-term thinking. And I believe that you will get that. All right, I believe that you have questions for me and I would like to actually address them. This is a very good time to actually, uh, yeah, feel free to ask and uh, interact with me. Lah. I, have, I would like to actually end this sharing session and pass the control back to Kaman. Kaman, all yours. All right, cool. So yeah, I think first thing first, thank you, Ian, lah, for your sharing. So let's start with the Q and A. Uh, for those who have questions, please do put it into the Q and A box instead of the chat box, lah. Right. So the first question that we have in the Q and A box for this strategy, may I know when to exit after accumulate certain wealth? I never think of exiting, lah. I mean to say, if Warren Buffett is not exiting, then no need to exit, lah. You know, I mean to say, we are looking at accumulating business. So as long as the business is profitable, it's paying out dividends. And uh, for me, I've been, that I have been collecting dividends for the longest time. And I know that the businesses that I own will continue to pay me dividends for as long as they are profitable. And I know that they are profitable, then uh, there's no point in selling. Uh. So no, so there's no need to exit. Okay, cool. So moving on to the second question. 
how to calculate profit when following RCA approach? Uh, that I mean to say that's it's not like a typical buy at one dollar, sell at two dollars, and then oh, that's hundred percent in terms of capital gains. It doesn't work that way, lah. But if you actually practice RCA, right, the focus is not so much about how much profits, as in percentage terms. Your percentage terms will not be that good because you're expected to buy when the stock price is actually down. So what happened is that um, you are looking at uh, accumulate, you are looking at accumulation, long-term accumulation. So which means to say you're looking at quantum rather than returns. Like what is your capital gains per annum? It's not, it's not that. You are looking at after 10 years of investing, how many of that stock, how many of that company shares do I own at the end of the day? It's like not recommending, but let's say for some people, maybe some old uncles and aunties, if they have been accumulating, for example, some bank stocks, maybe public bank or Bay bank, it's not about how much they make from that stock. It's about how many shares do they own at the end of the game. It's like, uh, if they can own 1 million shares of public bank, whoa, okay lah. So, so it's, it doesn't really matter what is the percentage already. I believe that everyone here, if you have 1 million, 1 million public bank shares, okay lah, you get to retire and travel the world already lah. So that is actually, so it's actually more of a quantum game than uh, how much profits am I going to make per stock lah. So it's a different mindset. <clears throat> Okay, so the next question. RCA is quite risky, just like putting all eggs in one basket on periodically basis. Many of us only have very limited resources. Any exit strategy for RCA? Uh, it depends on what is risky. La. There are so many definitions of risk, right? So uh, because the definition of RCA right, is either it can be one stock it can be one, let's say one unit trust fund, one ETF. So that's why I mean to say I don't fixate it to one. That's why <clears throat> some notes right here inside the notes is to have a watch list of let's say 20 to 25 stocks. So at the end of the day, you have a pool of stocks and then you can actually improvise the RCA in a way that, okay, in a certain month, I have this amount of capital, I want to invest. So therefore, I just uh, therefore I choose let's say a certain stock, let's say A Berhad. Then maybe three months down the road, maybe B Berhad is of a better deal. Then you buy B Berhad. So at the end of the day, your portfolio will have about more than ten stocks uh, maybe 20, 30 stocks at the end of the day. So it's not just about one, 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 one all the time lah. You can actually improvise. You don't need to follow this by the textbook. Take the good stuff of this principle and apply but then the cons of this stock the disadvantages you try to improv improvise it to your own to suit your needs and then from there you can build a portfolio all right okay so moving on what if i combine ta in bracket buy on support and fa together you will be confused so uh I mean to say for me, if you want to build a long-term portfolio, ditch TA lah. Just do FA. If you don't want, if you want to lead a sim simpler life, lah, unless you want to be on the computer screen looking at TA all the time, you want to have a nice, if let's say you want to have a nice life. You want to have a nice life whereby you get to spend time on other stuff lah, than just sitting in front of a computer screen and just uh, trade the markets, then just do FA will do lah. All right. Uh, TA is for people who... TA, I believe lah. There are many people who are into TA, but I uh, maybe you can treat that as a hobby lah. But then, uh, there's no need to combine FA and TA lah. Uh, just FA will do. Okay, so another question. Can I consider capital A as RCA in the long run? Okay, so there is a stock called capital A. And because this is a Bursa Malaysia, actually for kclaw.com, Bursa Malaysia, or any other platforms that we are on, uh, 
we will never tell you, we will never recommend or tell you what to buy. So we won't actually answer whether if you should or should not buy any securities. So if you look at the case over here, these are real companies, but uh, it is deliberate for us to actually conceal their identity. So if you want to use RCA, you use it on stocks that are fundamentally solid. What do you mean by fundamentally solid? Solid means their financial strength is strong. They are profitable, cash flow generating. Their balance sheet is strong. They have a lot of cash in their, in their bank account. All this kind of stuff, right? You, you, RCA, you want to use RCA, you use it on this kind of stuff. You use RCA on stocks that are not so consistent in, in their profit generation, cannot produce cash flow one. What for your RCA on that? The first thing to do is to avoid buying all this kind of stuff. Companies, they are losing money. No need to buy already. Just, just focus on this. Just focus on companies that, that uh, they are consistently, they are very consistent in their profit generation, income generation, cash flow generation. Good enough already. So I won't answer as to what you should do with this talk. Ah. Uh, Okay, so yep. Uh, the next question: What are the potential drawbacks of using ringgit costs averaging in the bear market? Humans are irrational, as mentioned. So you have to overcome that, lah. You have to be a bit more mechanical. Means to say, even at this time, you still stick to the plan. That is the drawback, lah. And a lot of people couldn't get past themselves when it comes to this. They cannot turn them into a machine because human beings are emotional. And because of that, if you can't pass, get past this kind of emotional, and these things you need to actually train, be conditioned, and uh, you need to actually have a revelation or even conviction that this thing works, then only you can do. Otherwise, when there's a bear market, stock price actually tumble like that, then, uh, then you got panic. Then the emo then the emotions get get the better of thing that is actually the drawback. That is actually a key drawback lah, uh for using RCA. Right, Carmen? Okay, so um there's another question. What are the key indicators to monitors when implementing RCA? Key indicators. So when you're using RCA, the game plan is to accumulate shares of good companies. So all the indicators are indicators of good companies. You go back to the accounts, you go back to the financial statements, you look at the business model, right? So from there, you want to find companies that are growing in terms of their, in terms of their revenues, they have good cost control, therefore they have a very good, um, they have very good profit margins and they can actually grow their profits like Abel Hatla. All right, every year can increase profit one. That that is actually a criteria. Lo. Their balance sheet is strong, very robust, very low debt, a lot of cash in the bank account, can pay you dividends, all this kind of stuff. So these are the things that we look at when it comes to using RCA. Simply because what you want to do is to actually accumulate shares of good businesses. And all you need to do is just make sure that you buy them when they are undervalued. That's all. Don't overpay for them. That's the only prerequisite. So it's fundamental. Sir. Okay, so next one. Financial mm -hmm. crisis happens every 10 years. He asked, mm -hmm. no need to exit or pull out that time even though the sector is crashing? Uh, like during COVID-19, my stock, my stock portfolio all crashed. Uh. A lot of capital gains often into capital losses. But at this time, it is actually a time. You see, investors all think very differently. So during this period of time, we know that certain businesses that we want to pick up, they are really good, they are solid, and we have the capital. So we come in, so we come into the stock market and we deploy and buy into 
stocks that we have been following that we want to accumulate for the longest period of time. So some stocks that are not so affordable now become more affordable and uh, therefore we come in and buy. So it's so therefore it is actually first and foremost, if you want to do RCA, you need to shift your mindset already because you are no longer thinking as a trader. You are not you are no longer thinking in terms of I buy this stock at one dollar, I'm gonna sell it at two dollars. If I buy a stock at one dollar and sell it at two dollars, that's a good investment. It's not really the case anymore. You buy a stock simply because the businesses are good. If it's one, if one dollar is a good deal, maybe 80 cents is also a good deal based on the valuation. So now it's a totally a different ball game. So that's why just now there's a question on how much profits am I going to get from this transaction? It doesn't work in RCA. RCA is long-term accumulation. All right. That is actually the that is actually the game plan for RCA. It is to accumulate. It is um like at the end of the 10 years period, you want to accumulate, let's say, 20,000 of a certain stock. What is the cost of that? How much are you going to pay to accumulate that $20,000 worth of uh, 20,000 shares of that company? The lower, the better. So when do you get it at a low price? It's always at the bear market. It's, also, it's always happening during market crisis. So at this time, your profits may... Your, you may not even have capital gains at the time, but uh, you get it at a good price. Uh. And when you get it at a good price, then uh, that is a waiting game. So investment or investing is actually meant for the patient, for people who can wait, for people who are willing to wait. So you need, it's like fishing. Uh. All right. So it's not, it's not so much about, oh, throw in and you start to actually uh, dig out a lot of fish from the pond. La. It's, it doesn't work that way. La. So um, you need to exercise a little bit more patience in order to make RCA work. Right, Carmen? Okay, so uh, next question. Can you share how you can find uh, companies like A. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there are power. Uh, so for me, financial statements is the thing that I look at. Lah. Maybe because of my background as a accounting guy. So I like companies that have very solid finance, very solid financials. Uh, so I mean to say the first step is to learn how to do accounting. How to how to interpret financial statements will be very important. So that is actually the bedrock. That is the cornerstone the foundation of everything is all about accounting. It's all is 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 the whole basic. Without accounting, I cannot invest. If I do not know how to read balance sheet, I cannot invest already. Any stock looks the same already, but with um accounting skills, with the ability to read all this income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement, I get to see oh. Some stocks are really good, like Aberhart. Some stocks are not as good, like Biberhart. Then I can just separate good deals from bad deals already. So the first step and the most crucial step is to do that, accounting. Then there's another step, which is valuation. That's where your PE ratio, that's how you, okay, this company is good, but what is the, what is the valuation that I'm willing to pay? Now that, that is actually another skill. These two combined, very good. You know how to do this? You can actually start to build a small little portfolio already. So these two first lah, to get the ball rolling. Mm. Okay, so uh, next question. Isn't RCA better for ETF like US S&P 500 rather than individual spot since uh, need to do analysts for analysis for stocks and most people don't or won't want to learn that oh okay so that's one way of looking at it lah. and there are some people who are actually uh, doing that uh, that may make a little bit of sense if let's say the person doesn't doesn't want to go through the the whole 
you know, reading the financial statement, lah, all this kind of stuff, then maybe, lah, then maybe this is actually one way to look at RCA. Or another way to look at RCA is you voluntarily put your money into EPF. Lah. <laughs> That's another way of looking at it. Lah. Okay. So, um, but of course, if you are talking about the S&P 500, at least to say you get to hedge, I mean to say, unless you're interested to hold some some of your wealth in US dollars, uh, then of course, then that's one way of looking at it. But of course, right now we are just, the context of this webinar is still uh, Bursa Malaysia because it's hosted by Bursa Malaysia. So therefore, um, let's just, for, for the time being, I will be sticking the RCA strategy towards stocks listed on Bursa Malaysia. Right, Carmen? Okay, so uh, moving on. How mm -hmm. does one adjust their RCA strategy during period of economic uncertainty? If you notice for the past 10 years, since when the economy is certain, right? <laughs> There's no certainty. The only thing certain in the economy in the only thing certain these days is change. The only thing certain in our economy situation today is uncertainties. It doesn't matter whether it's this year, next year, doesn't matter which year. Economy uncertainties, changes, fluctuations, um, unpredictability, volatility will be here to stay. The only thing for us as investors is to learn how to manage it. All right? It's not something that you can avoid. This year, economy certain or not? Not certain. Next year, you ask the same question, not certain, not certain. Every year, not certain. Then since when? Then if every year, not certain, then when are you going to invest? Then you won't invest. Lo? Because which year is certain? None. The answer is none of the above. No years are certain ones. All right. So the only way is to manage it. Uh, so in this case, RCA is just one of the one of the ways, one of the methods to manage uncertainty. That's why the slide here says you have you have to be a bit like machine lah. All right. In that is actually the strong point. So if you are mechanical, you are quite machine machine like then uh, you can use RCA better. Lah. Otherwise, um, let's say you have been asked, let's say you have been doing RCA in year one, year two, then year three, ah yeah, ah yeah, not, not very certain. Lah. Then how? Then don't want to do RCA already. So, so once again, uh, you got to, once again, to, to really, to really appreciate and uh, use this strategy, you got to actually overcome this, uh, overcome this, uh, this thing, uh, this emotional barrier. If you can do that, then uh, RCA is definitely for you. Uh. <clears throat> okay, so uh, moving on. Do your yep. portfolio of quote-unquote company A consist of KLSE only or also others such as DJ and NASDAQ? Of course, there are others lah. I mean, I mean, I mean to say, so this A Bahad thing, it works on it works on you. You can replicate it lah. Okay, you can replicate it into other stock exchanges. But for the context of Bursa Malaysia, does it works? It it works lah. Ah. but to answer your question, do I have other stocks in beyond Malaysia? The answer is yes. Okay. So next one, how do interest rate influence the effectiveness of RCA? When it comes to RCA, you don't consider interest rate fluctuation already. It's not about which political party is ruling Malaysia or the world, in fact. Lah. You don't care who is actually the... You don't, you, you're not really concerned about, oh, this political party is going to come up. So what will happen to the stock market? It's none of that stuff already. It doesn't matter who is actually sitting in the parliament. It, it, it doesn't really matter who is, what is the OPR rate, what is the interest rate that the bank, that our central bank is actually setting. It doesn't really matter about crude palm oil prices. 
of commodity prices, oil prices. It's none of that already. RCA is just about sticking to the fundamentals. Um, just be ruthlessly religious. Stick to the plan and just write along and uh, make it happen in the long term. So it's easy. So it's like you see, yeah. Uh, um, so guys, you see here, RCA is just two lines, you know. It's just two lines. Investing a fixed ringgit amount in a stock. Hopefully, it's Aberhart. Hopefully, you choose Aberhart. Huh? On a regular basis, on a regular basis, regardless of his stock price. Of course, I don't like the the final one. But the 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 essence of it is that simple. But the problem is always. Sure, long term. Ah, uh, uh, what happened if the what happened if the political party changes? Ah, uh, what happened if the interest rate change? Ah, uh, what happened if the oil price go up? Ah, uh, what happened if this happened? Ah, uh, that happened. Ah, uh, can uh, cannot. Uh, <laughs> so all these kind of things all come into play, lor. So um, so that is actually the problem, uh. Although it's simple, but managing emotions because we are human beings, that can be a difficult part. That's also part of the homework to, to doing or exercising RCA well. Okay, so uh, this is the last question in Q&A box. Oh, we have additional one. So I think we can address the last one. Right, so uh, can RCA be applied to different asset classes apart from stocks? Uh, of course it can. Uh. Of course it can. So you you can RCA in anything that you anything that you like. However, the one common thing that you need to remember is when you RCA, make sure that you understand what you are. Make sure you understand the the stock. Make sure that the fundamentals of the stock is actually good. All right. So the key word here is fundamentals. You got to be, you got to be good with your fundamentals. Then okay, you can RCA with properties, no problem. It's like every five years I buy one property in a, in a mature taman, or in a mature neighborhood. Let's say you buy in, let's say you buy into a mature neighborhood in one of the one of the suburbs in Klang Valley that you know that you can't go wrong. You just RCA on that every five years, one property. By the time you retire, you may have five or six properties. Okay, I still can retire. But that's also called RCA. But, all right, in that sense. EPF, everybody is doing RCA already, unless you're self-employed. All right. Uh, of course, I, don't, I can't say for unit trust uh, because I do not know how to evaluate unit trust. And someone said you can do ETF with S and P five hundred. Yeah, you can actually do that. Uh, if you believe that S and P five hundred will always go up, then of course you can do that. So you can actually RCA with, with uh different assets, of a uh, different class. No problem. The whole principle is the same. RCA is not limited to, to one specific class. It's just a principle. It's just a strategy. Okay, um, actually another question pop up. <laughs> so we have last two. Lah. Okay, since we have time, we'll take two more. Okay, so can I say RCA is an alternative to time deposit? Time deposit. So FD. Uh, not really. Lah. It's not an investment for me. Lah. FD is where you keep your emergency fund. FD is about liquidity. So it's like, okay, I do not know what to do. I haven't done my research on the stock. I haven't like, uh, I do not know what to buy, but I have money. So you have money, but you don't have knowledge or you don't have the idea on what to buy. Or maybe you have the idea, but you're just waiting for the specific asset, maybe a stock, maybe a property to be of a much better value. Then only you buy. So during this period of time, what do you do? You just keep your money in FD. It's an emergency fund. It's a reserve fund. RCA is an investment strategy. All right. So 
you are looking at two different things. So it's not it's not an alternative to one another. It's a complete different thing. Okay, so this would be the last question for this for the session today. Lah. So if okay. I notice the revenue profit coming down over quarters, do I need to stop RCA or continue to monitor? Uh, this is actually a situational case. It's a case by case study. Um, we can't. You can't have a one answer that blankets everything. It doesn't work that way. All right, but I would say that let's say COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen, certain companies couldn't do business right. Then the profits all tank. Is that the fault of the business, or is it because of external events? So if it's because of external events, like oh lockdown. No retail shops can open that kind of situation. Then, uh, I, then I suppose uh, that one I think is acceptable. But if let's say it is due to that company having some problem, fundamental problem, then of course, uh, then of course you have to stop RCA in. Maybe you have to reassess the fundamentals of the business. And if you happen to reassess the fundamentals of the business and the business is deteriorating, it's not performing as well, then you may want to consider selling off the stock if the fundamentals is no good. Simply because the ultimate objective of building a portfolio is to have a portfolio of stocks whereby these stocks, the business fundamentals are the most solid. When you have that, and you make sure that you don't overpay for them, that's how you can actually build six or seven figure kind of portfolio and sustain it there and stay there, right? So, so, that is actually, so that is actually the common route that most investors are taking in order to build that kind of size of a portfolio. A lot of people try to wait and see. A lot of people try to like time the market and all this kind of stuff, but I'm not too sure whether they have a six or seven figure portfolio lah. Or at least I do not have, I do not know of anyone who does that lah. But uh, for most people who have a full time job or have a full time business, but yet still have six or seven figure kind of portfolio, that is what I believe they do lah. All right, they just RCA, but make sure they RCA on the right thing. Then good enough already. Okay. All right, come on. Okay, right. Yep. So that would be the end of the session. So, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Do you mind letting me share the screen? Oh, uh, no. Of, of course, I uh, of course I love you. Oh, I have stopped sharing my screen already. Okay, thank you. So, let me just put up my screen first. All right. So, once again, you know, thank you, everyone. And also, thank you for Ian for such a wonderful sharing as well as for addressing all the questions from the audience right so uh with that being said that's where we'll end our session let me just stop recording first